He loved Isabel very dearly. And he wrote this poem as he was about to enter matrimony with this woman. Now read what he wrote. These are David's words, and I sang these words and put it to music. Take my hand, this is your time. From all of heaven's creation, this day was made for you. Hold on to this moment for the rest of our lives. Let us walk together into this passage, the uh, passage of life, love, and marriage. Loving every part of you, my darling, I cherish you. I give my heart to you. As I say I do, enter into the passage of marriage in a canoe. Growing <laughs> down the river into a new life together, you and I. And I put it to music and it's kind of nice. And I have an MP3, so if anybody wants one, I can give them to you. And as you can see, I've made a lot of notes on this paper because I played and sang at the same time. Uh, but there was more, which we didn't get to record, but I'll read you a little bit. The Passage of Marriage, David J. Funda Nabagon. <laughs> a selection worth a thousand readings for this sacred new beginning. Many days will fill this time space to unveil a miracle portrait of eloquence from all the seasons of enduring all things, life's eternal promise, every heartbeat beats with intensity. And it goes on and on and on because David was a writer. He was a poet. And he loved music. And when I would sit down at the piano and play, David would sometimes be in tears. His emotions were close to the surface. But on a lighter note, as I said earlier, David was one of the most optimistic people I've ever met in my life. He always had good things to say about life, good things to say about people, and good things to say about himself. <laughs> For example, he never forgot to remind me when his birthday was. <laughs> and he would tell me like weeks in advance. <laughs> December the 9th, don't forget. <laughs> and so I would never forget. And so I would wish him happy birthday or take him out for a nice cap at Tim's where we used to go. And the other thing about David was he always felt that he had a tremendous importance in this life. He wasn't going to take a back seat to anybody. And I mean that literally. Because when wheel trains would come to pick him up at my house after we had a recording session, he would insist that he ride in the front seat. <laughs> Not in the back seat. <laughs> and, he, and he said to me, if there's an old lady in the front seat, or an old man in the front seat, put him in the back, because I'm riding in the front. <laughs> so I won't go on much longer, but his optimism was infectious. And it was so infectious that I didn't want this infection anymore. I don't be so cheerful. <laughs> how can you be so cheerful? Well, how could he be so cheerful? Because he had a great faith in himself and uh, faith in God. And he loved to serve the people. Literally 
and figure, figure. He would serve food. He would serve them his optimism. Based, of course, on the scriptures. So that's basically my message today. And I have that MP3 if anybody would like. And it's free. Thank you very much. of their will is because of the will of God. And I believe that today we are seeing the death in front of us, our very eyes. But this death has taken our brother up to heaven. Wow. And someday, according to the scriptures, that someday we will come to death. And those that are saved of already, that are, are already serving the Lord, they can say, death, where is thy sting? Because when you're a Christian, a born-again Christian, there is no sting of death. You are welcome to heaven right away. Nicodemus was such a man. And John chapter 3, the Bible declares now there was a certain man among the Pharisees named Nicodemus, ruler, member of the Sanhedrin among the Jews, who came to Jesus at night and said, who came to Jesus at night and said, Jesus Christ 
the Son of the living God. Jesus said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. 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 Then he said here, that which is born of the flesh, you see it right here before you, is flesh. Physical is merely physical. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Amen. He has a spirit. He's up in heaven right now. Amen. Rejoicing with all the angels. I can't say too much of his dad. I can't say too much of his mom. Because I don't know if they accepted the Lord. Jesus. But I know. I'll see him there someday. My wife. He'll see. She'll see. Brother Thunder. Because we have accepted the Lord. Amen. We have Jesus Christ living within us. He baptized us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. According to Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. There is one that is coming. John said that I am not even worthy to unleash and tie the sandals. He is coming. He's the one that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's why you see Brother Alex jumping around because his fire, his bones are on fire. I'm 75 years old, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like 57. I go on those highways, winter roads. I just love it because Jesus is my strength. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Just came back from a place called Wemenji. You know where that is, sister? People love the Lord over there. They we're happy to hear the Word of God. Just like you are today, you are happy to hear the Word of God, even if you don't know it or not. But he said here, Nicodemus said to him, oh yeah, I love this one. <laughs> Maybe you're in the same boat. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be possible? Jesus replied, you are the greatest well-known teacher of Israel, and yet you do not know nor understand these things from the scriptures. That's one Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, you need to look at and ask yourself. Do I understand what the scriptures are saying to me? You need to do that today. Jesus replied, You are the great, well known teacher of Israel, and you do not know and understand these things from the scripture. I'm so glad I'm not an educated man. I barely made great seven books. The one thing I do know with the Word of God. I love the Word of God. I tell my, my, uh, my uh, Bible students, I want you to read at least three chapters a day. <laughs> because that is your spiritual food. Yes. Amen. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, well, this is great, folks, you got to listen to this. We speak only what we uh, uh, absolutely know, testify about what we actually see as eyewitnesses. And still, you reject, you reject our evidence. Do not accept our testimony. How many people seen the passion of Christ? And I see some hands. How many have seen the passion of Christ? That ought to woke you up. That ought to shook your soul. Then he said here, oh, I love this one, Brother Mike. He said, I told you earthly things. That is, things that happen right here on earth. <laughs> and you do not believe. <clears throat> He's talking to uh, Nicodemus. 
How will you believe? And trust me if I tell you heavenly things. No one has gone up into heaven, but there is one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man, the Son of Man himself, whose name, whose home is in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> this man that brought us here, although he has always had my attention, came here in this auditorium chapel to show us the way that there is a truth that Jesus Christ is the truth Amen. he's ministering to you through the word of God by the mouth of his friend brother Samuel Alex Wesley it is up to you today which way you want to go there is a heaven and there is a hell if you don't know how to spell L, E, H, E, L, L. I learned that when I was in grade 7. H, E, L, L. Now there's another place. H, E, A, V, E, N. Which is L. Amen. I did a demonstration and I pastored my first church back in 1989. I was bold when I was a young man. I didn't take no punches from nobody. I, I didn't even care if I got thrown out of rev my own reservation, even though I did got thrown out some reservations <laughs> in my ministry. I said, I want all the ones that have accepted the Lord to go this way. No, no, excuse me. I said, I want all the ones that accepted the Lord to go this way. I tell you, folks, there were a few of them there were just so happy, shaking hands and holding each other. Some of them were even holding kids. And there they were. I don't have to tell you this. The rest of them were over there. They're going to hell. Hell is not a very good place. It wasn't made for you. No. It wasn't made for you, Mike. It was made for Lucifer. The, the being that God created hmm. wanted to take over the kingdom of God. Because of that, sin has spread all over the world. Hmm. He was kicked out of heaven and the Bible tells us he brought out one third of angels. It does not say how many, but it says one third. Got out, kicked out of heaven. That hell, hell, H-E-L-L -L was made for Lucifer, made for his the angels that he brought out of heaven. That hell was made for them. But today, my friends, you may ask, ask yourself, where do I belong? You can make that choice today. That hell wasn't made for you. Let me repeat it. It was made for Lucifer and his angels, demonic spirits. That's hell. Hmm. But the Bible clearly declares if we worship the Lord God who made us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he also said, let us create man in our image. Do I look like God to you this morning? But there is a God that lives within me. Hallelujah. There was a God in Brother Thunder's life. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost lived in Brother Thunder's life. He went home to be with the Lord. And I want you, my friend, where are you going to go when the time comes? Are you going to go to heaven or are you going to go to hell? I would have chased you to go to hell. It's entirely up to you. But Brother Alex, I'm not a sinner. That's odd. That's what I read this in the Bible. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We were born sinners because Adam disobeyed God. He was born a sinner. He brought the sin into this world. Yeah. And that's why we're here, folks. Two more minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. I want everybody to repeat this sinner's prayer with me because I got two minutes. I'm going to make it fast. Mm -hmm. Only you know if you're going to heaven. Only you know if you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. So just privately, one-on-one -on -one with God this morning. One-on-one. -on -one. 
You can say this prayer silently. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I want you to come into my life this very moment. I ask you cleanse me with your blood so my name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus today I am saved. If you have prayed that prayer silently with Brother Alex you are now a child of God. You are my brother. Mm. I am your brother. You are my sister. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Our sister is going to take over from here as we close this meeting. But I, before I do that, before she does that, I need to have six men strong. There's one walking right there. <laughs> so I need six men six. to help carry our uh, casket. Amen. So sister, can we come up and uh, let's praise the Lord? Uh, yes, for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Come on up here. I just wanted to, this is David's mom. Yeah. The permit of the rains. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I had uh, the privilege of knowing David. I met David at the Destiny and Dominion Church. I uh, walked in there because I had uh, done a funeral there the day before, so I had gone back to see the, the, the pastor uh, speak on Sunday. Uh, and one of the first people that came up to me with this huge smile on his face and welcoming me in like I belonged there um, was David. And I saw David quite a few times after that. Always, like everybody said here so far, always had a smile on his face. I was always cheerful, always happy, no matter what was going on in his life. I had the privilege of serving him when his mother passed away. I did the service for him, for him with, with his mom. So I'm a funeral director here, but I'm here today as David's friend. Um, he was a great guy. I, I loved him. I, I bumped in. I was. Lucky enough to bump into him a couple of times on the, on the, on the, on the TTC. Um, he called me every once in a while, send me little messages, little you know, little encouragements. Uh, you know, keep Jesus in your life. <laughs> keep going. Always smile. Be happy. He's a great guy. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. We're gonna sing a few more hymn songs. Uh, come on, there, honey. To sing. And uh, after that, we'll just praise the Lord for now. And when we finish, you can have your last chance to visit the body of David and Abigail. All right? Mm -hmm. And before we finish, I need to have six strong men. Six strong men. How do you do, brother? <laughs> so we're going to have six strong men to help uh, uh, the uh, place where it's going to go.
Yeah.